Hi, my name is Hamid. I'm a certified instructor at ASM Educational Center. We're located in College Park, I'm inside in Rockford, Maryland. Our website is www.asmed.com with the slash L. That will take you to our landing page. When you come here, we do all the training. We do CompTIA A plus, Netto plus, and also we do Amazon classes. If you go here, Amazon classes, we have a different classes. One we have for solution architecture, then we have developer, then we have a sysop, then we have a professional architecture, uh, professional devop, and also a special network that. So today I'm going to do a second part of this exam question on solution architecture, okay? So what that means, if you go to Google type in AWS Certified Solution Architecture Associate Practice Exam, you're going to see this page, and when you come down, okay, you come down here, you're going to see what? You see it download what? Sample question. When you click here, that will take you to this page, okay? So, on last video, I did part one. I did from question number one. Make sure you watch last video. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do number six, okay? So, let's go over the question and I'm going to explain more detail for the keyword for the exam. Okay, let's go there. Oops, sorry about that. So number six, it says that a web application allows customer to upload orders to S3 bucket, okay? The resulting Amazon S3 events trigger a Lambda. So we have S3 then trigger a Lambda function that insert a message in SQS queuing. A single EC2 instance read message from the queue, okay? Process them and stores them in DynamoDB table partition by unique order ID. Next month, the traffic is expected to increase by the factor of 10. So what that means, they expect that they're going to have a lot of traffic. What this means, this is similar to this. Let's say you want to do business and you expect that during by Christmas time or Black Friday, Thanksgiving, you expect to you have a lot of traffic. So what you can do, you can put some parameter and you can, this is called auto scaling, okay? What you can do, you can put a parameter if the CPU, is, for example, is greater than 80%, add one more web server. If the CPU is less than 20%, bring it down and you can say minimum from 2 to 5. Actually, I have a video on that. I'm going to show you that later on where the link is. Okay, so that's what that means. Next one, traffic expected to increase by a factor of 10 and the, and the solution architecture is reviewing architecture for possible scaling problems. So that's a keyword, scaling problem. Okay. Which component is most likely to need re-architecting to be able to scale to accomplish the new that? So when we do that, let's get the choices. Lambda function. Lambda function is a trigger function, so it's not used for scaling, okay? SQSQ is only for queuing, okay? EC2 instance, that will be the answer because you want to scale, you want to do auto scaling on EC2. Again, if the CPU more than 80%, add one or more instance and it's a minimum two maximum five for example is if this speed cpu utilization is less than 20 percent remove one so that's called auto scaling dynamic dynamo db table that's not the answer because that does not talk about this so the best answer will be ec2 instance so what that means if you go back to our page right here if you go back to blogs if you go all the way down to Amazon AWS blog, when you come down, you can see a bunch of blog. And I have done lab on this. I I go down, down, down. So I highly recommend watch that lab, okay? It's right here. Amazon AWS auto scale with low balancing, okay? So what I've done, I've created a lab for here. Let me explain to you. This is classic low balance with auto scaling. We got one instance here, one instance. We have two instances at the minimum. So if the CPU goes more than 80%, we're going to add one more instance. And we can say minimum of two, maximum of five. So everything in step one, step two, step three is all right here. And you can watch that, okay? And there's a video here and explain to you that right here, okay? So that's the lab is. So the answer for this question is going to be what? EC2. What component is most likely to need? I need to do EC2 instance with what? Auto scaling. That's the key part. Don't forget that, okay? Very good. Let's go to number seven. An application saves logs to S3 bucket. A user wants to keep the logs for one month 
for troubleshooting purposes and then purge the logs. Purge it, that means you want to clean it. How do we do that? Let's look at the question. Answer. What we should enable this? Adding a bucket policy on S3? No, bucket policy is just for access. Who can get access to that? So bucket policy does not solve this problem. Configure lifecycle management configuration rules on S3. That sounds good. That's what lifecycle means. That means which I'm going to show right now. What that means, like after 30 days, you do something. After another 30 days, you do something else. Or sometimes after 60 days, you can put archive. This is called life cycle management, okay? Well, after 30 days, you can say expire, so it get cleaned up. Create IAM policy for S3 bucket. No, again, this does not apply that because this is not about security or access control. Enable course on the S3 bucket. Course is if you want to use a different bucket communicate to each other with a different account or different region so you want a course so the best answer will be what life cycle configuration rules so the best to do that let me show you an example demo so I'll go to, I'll go to here s3 okay so let me show you that let's go create new bucket and I call that life cycle example one two three four five six okay I create bucket okay all right next okay that's it management next we don't none of these I just uncheck this again just want to create a bucket so we create a bucket right now okay now after creating the buckets okay one in bucket also so that creates successful errors and it's no big okay so bucket has been what create that if I click um date creator so I see right here life cycle I click on this one I click here then I go to management right here see I can add that life cycle rules I can add that okay and I call that let's say expire after 30 days that's the name okay I said next here class transition we're not good nothing next then here as a current version, okay, configure expression current version, then I can say that current version expire after what? Let's say 30 days. Next, and then what? Save. So this is called what? Lifecycle management. You can do same thing for lifecycle management if you want to archive it. Anytime that they talk about archiving, remember that for archiving, you can put it there as much cheaper than regular bucket is. But for don't forget that for archiving, if you want to retrieve your object within three to four days three to four hours they will charge extra money so anytime they talk about archiving or expire bucket or anything like that in a bucket you want to use the concept of what life cycle okay so that's what that question is right here configure what life cycle configuration rules on the s3 bucket okay let's go next question an application running ec2 on ec2 instance process sensitive information stored on s3 okay so we have something that is access to S3. The information access over the internet. The security team is concerned that the internal internet connected to Amazon S3 is secure list. So what they're saying that um, we have uh, some something on S3 and they have a server on the private subnet. And in order for these guys to get out of that, they have to go to internet. But we don't want this private subnet go to internet. So Amazon came with the idea of something called what? VPC endpoint for S3. So what that means as follow. Let me show you. I have a lab on this. Again, when I go to Amazon, when I go to right here, blogs, when I go to Amazon, when I go to my blogs right here, I have done a lab for that one. And Amazon, that was, you're gonna go to where? Here. And when you go down, you're gonna see something called what? S3 right here. Amazon AWS S3 endpoints. So I'm going to open this new tab. So I've done the lab. Basically, what that is, this is a private subnet. I don't want these people to get out to internet to enter. I want these people directly goes to S3, which is in public right here. So this is called what? S3 endpoint. Okay, I have done lab. I have a public private. In here we have two server. We have one server in the public and one server in the private. Okay, all these IP addresses. So the goal is that these guys, without, without NAT gateway, I don't want to use NAT gateway. I don't want these guys use NAT gateway to insert. I just want to direct from here to go there. And this is done via what? VPC endpoint. If I go back to here, 
I'll go back to services. I'll go back to my VPC on top, okay? And when you come down on the left side, you come down, down, down. And you're going to see something called what? VPC, what? Endpoint service right here. Okay? Create endpoint. And you can pick what service you want. Uh, AWS services like that, right? Then you're going to say what? S3. Okay? And come down and pick what? EC2 that right here. Okay? And then you can do a bunch of other stuff. You can do available zone, all that good stuff, okay? But the concept is called what? Create a what? Endpoint. It basically allows you to securely connect your VBC into another services. An interface endpoint is powered by PowerLink. They use PowerLink and use an elastic network interface as interpoint that. So what's going to happen, and I've done lab in here, okay? And this one. So these people, they don't have an internet access. They just go direct to here. So this is the answer is, okay? What solution to resolve this? You want to use, well, VPC endpoint bands because we don't want these people to get exposed to that. So the rest of the question is, answer is wrong. Access data through intergate, no, because that's not going to be secure. VPN is not good and NAT gate, no. The best answer is, well, VPC endpoint for what? S3. So make sure you watch this, what? Video. And you understand much more today. Amazon AWS S3 VC VPC Enforce, so you understand the concept. Okay, that's that question, number eight. Let's go to number nine. All right. Organization is building an Amazon Redshift cluster in the shared service of VPC. The cluster will have host what? Sensitive data. How can organization control which network can access the cluster? So here we're going to talk about some kind of like a security, okay? Again, they said how can the organization control which network can access the cluster? Let's look at their choices. Run the cluster in different VPC and connect them through VPC. That doesn't solve the problem. Create a database user inside Amazon Redshift cluster only for users that doesn't do it. Define here's it sounds good. Define a cluster secure group for the cluster that allows access from allowed network. So that means you're going to create secure clues and access from allow network. That sounds good. Allow only access network that connect with the shared service of your VPN. No, that's not good. So what that means, let me show you. When I go back to here, when I go back to my EC2 on top, let's go, I'll go to one of my secure group I have here. We just wait this comes up. Okay. And let's take this one, this guy. I click here, I say inbound, then I edit. So right now, I see this means anywhere, anywhere, right? I can say add rule, right? Some, some kind of rule, right? Let's say they want to do, I don't know, HTTP or anything else like that, or they want to do MSQL. I can say that's TCP that port, and then I say custom, okay? Then I can say like from this network. Let's say 10.0.0.0.0 slash what, 24. So only these people can get access using these ports. So that's what's called security group. Okay? So that's the question is, again, let's read it one more time. An organization is building an Amazon Redshift cluster in their shared service VPC. The cluster would have sensitive data as keyword. How can the organization control which network can access that? So the best answer would be define a cluster security group as a key secure group for constant that allows access from that allowed network. So exactly what I did, I can do that one, which allow access to, to that port, oops, not that one, to the other one, okay? So we can do, again, edit, inbound rules, and I can add rules, like whatever, if it's uh, something, like um, any kind of stuff, like we want, let's say MySQL, right? Then I can say it comes from that and it's a network what 10 .0 slash what 24. Save. Okay. Alright. So that's what that question is. Okay? Okay, let's go last question. Number 10. This is a good question is a solution architecture is designing an online shopping application running a VPC on the EC2 instance. 
behind elastic load balance, application load balance. So we have uh, application load balance. The instance run in, in auto scaling group acts across multiple available zones. Okay. The application tier must be read and write data to a customer managed database server. So this application have to be access to customer managed database. Okay. There should be no access to database from intern. So I don't want the people from outside the world come to database. But the cluster must be obtained, must be able to obtain software patches from intern. Okay. So what that means, I don't want to go from outside the world to come in, but I want the people from inside get outside to the internet. So the best answer will be what? C. Public subnets for application for for tier. I'm sorry, you put the public subnet for application tier and NAT gave it and private subnet for database. So what they're saying that you put the database cluster on private, then you're gonna have a public subnet application and also you gotta put NAT gave it. That's the best answer, okay? What that means, let me show you that. Again, if I go back to blocks, I have a lab done on this. Amazon AWS right here, okay? You go down, down, down. We have done a lab. It's called NAT. What gave If I go down, down, make sure you watch all of these videos. It will help you a lot to pass exam. Right here. When I click this guy, okay, look what happened. I have a picture. This is a private subnet. This is public subnet, okay? So this is private subnet and public subnet. You're going to put your what database server here and you're going to put other sub cluster all here. In order these guys get access to internet, you got to put a what NAT gave it. Now the key is when you do this, you got to put NAT gave it inside the what public subnet. That's the key things. Okay, look at the answer. So public subnet for application and, and NAT gave it and the private subnet for app, that means. Now look at the choice A. Public subnet for both application, that's not good. Public subnet for application tier and the private subnet for database, that's kind of good, but you need what? NAT gave it. Public subnet for application tier, that's good. And private subnet for app, that NAT gave it. So what they said, this is wrong because they said I put NAT gave it inside of a private subnet. That's not good because we have to put it on here. Okay? So if, if you look at the here, we're going to put a NAT gave it on this guy, on the public subnet and the private subnet here. Again, if you have a question or a comment, you can welcome us to contact us at asme.com and this is our phone number 301-984-7400 and make sure you contact us and make sure you watch the other part of that. And more video and also if you go back to here in YouTube, when you go to YouTube, we have more video that you can watch it. We have a lot of video that we posted here. All of our video is going to be posted here. Okay, thanks so much and have a good day.